Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist this day. Today the church remembers Francis of Assisi. Francis was born in Assisi in central Italy either in 1181 or the following year. He was baptised Giovanni but given the name Francesco by his father, a cloth merchant who traded in France and had married a French wife. There was an expectation that he would eventually take over his father's business, but Francis had a rebellious youth and a difficult relationship with his father. After suffering the ignominy of imprisonment following capture whilst at war with the local city of Perugia, he'd returned a changed man. He took to caring for disused churches and for the poor, particularly those suffering from leprosy. Whilst praying in the semi-derelict church of St. Damien, he distinctly heard the words, Go and repair my church, which you see is falling down. Others joined him, and he prepared a simple, gospel-based rule for them all to live by. As the order grew, it witnessed to Christ through preaching the gospel of repentance and emphasising the poverty of Christ as an example for his followers. Two years before his death, his life being so closely linked with that of his crucified Saviour, he received the stigmata, the marks of the wounds of Christ on his body. At his death, on the evening of the 3rd of October, 1226, his order had sped throughout, spread throughout Western Christendom. We meet as God's people in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the Feast of St. Francis. O oh God, you ever delight to reveal yourself to the childlike and lowly of heart. Grant that, following the example of the blessed Francis, we may count the wisdom of this world as foolishness and know only Jesus Christ and him crucified, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a reading from the prophecy of Micah. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do a small thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? you of little faith. And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good measure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms, Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sally Ann and I, or Mrs Lightbound and I, have a very different view about a certain TV programme, Grand Designs. Sally Ann lo loves it, I loathe it. I actually loathe it with a passion. And it's been on television an awful lot during lockdown. And yet, there is something intriguing about it. The programme is, of course, about rebuilding properties. And the thing about rebuilding is it never, of course, goes quite to plan or to design. In many ways, the notion of a grand design is revealed to be something of a romantic myth. What always seems to happen is the project runs into challenges and the design needs to be tweaked or modified, sometimes seriously so. The process of rebuilding invariably also does several other things. It always seems to incur a far greater cost than was initially budgeted for, and it always takes longer than the initial schedule, and it always tests the strength and quality of the relationships involved. St Francis was, of course, charged by God with the mandate to rebuild my church. And this he duly did. He didn't do it with a grand design in mind, and he didn't do it quickly, nor did he do it without incurring a significant cost, and nor did he do it on his own. But rebuild the church he did, and with such effect that we still celebrate his life and his witness to this day, to the extent that even the Pope took his name. St Francis has plenty to teach us about rebuilding. And rebuilding the church is surely our contemporary mandate. For as the Archbishop of Canterbury said last week in his presidential address to General, General Synod, we do not know what type of Church of England will emerge from the pandemic, but we do know that it will be different. If Archbishop Justin is right, and to be clear, I think he is bang on the money, we perhaps need to let go of any notions of grand design, still less thinking and believing that what will emerge is going to be an absolute replica of what went before, and instead focusing on rebuilding Christ's church. I also think we need to accept that this is going to be cost more than we thought, not just financially, but spiritually. And it's going to test relationships like never before, or at least not in living memory. I think this is true for the Church of England as a whole and for the parish. So the question for us is simply this, how committed are we to rebuilding the church brick by brick, allowing ourselves to bear the cost and discover what emerges? Or are we pinning our hopes on some form of mythical grand design. If we are committed to playing our role in rebuilding the church, then what should we consider to be our bricks and mortar, and who are we going to use as our suppliers? The supplier, of course, must be God, and the way we discover God's will in rebuilding the church is prayer. But we can also draw on the experience of those who have gone before us, such as Francis, who in some ways can be regarded as our guarantor. Francis, in rebuilding the church, insisted that po poverty and solidarity with the poor, poor must form the very foundations. The bricks he used included a commitment to due justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly. Other bricks he used were, were, were a radical for his time, commitment to inclusivity. For his closest colleague and spiritual friend was St Clair, and also a passion for creation. The mortar he relied on was prayer and the sacrament of the Eucharist. But Francis, just like the Franciscan movement, 
refused to reduce prayer, liturgy and worship to strictly adhered formulas. He and the Franciscan movement overall constantly refined his water to meet the requirements of the specific context in which the rebuilt church was to be established. In her book, Franciscan Footprints, Sister Helen Julian, the Minister General of her order, who I trained with for ordination, quotes from Father Andrew, not me, the first priest to be ordained in a religious habit in the Church of England, who characterised the Franciscan movement as follows, as taking the very illogical position of holding extreme Catholic views about the sacraments and the very broad evangelical views about the love of God. She also quotes Petter Dunstan, a historian of the Franciscan movement. She wrote that Franciscanism is a tradi tradition full of seeming contradictions, Catholic and Evangelical, Western and Eastern, active and contemplative in other words, traditionally monastic, but pioneeringly modern. Our mandate, like Francis, is to rebuild the church. But like Francis, I don't think we can do it with either a grand design in mind or in the belief that whatever is rebuilt will necessarily be a precise replica of what went before. I also think that as we must accept that rebuilding is inherently messy, costly, financially and in terms of our preferences and relationships and a challenging process. But it feels as though to me it is a necessary process. We have been given, through God's providence, the bricks and mortar that we require. So let me finish with a question. Will you help rebuild Christ's church in this place? Or are you pinning, or pinning sorry, all of your hopes on the completion of some form of grand design? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. Loving Lord and God, we hold the pain of the world before you. For a world ravaged by sickness and illness. For a world ravaged by war and tyranny. For a world characterised by enmity and political and social strife. We hold the world before you, the pain of the world before you, in the faith and confidence that an unhealthy world needs a healthy church, a rebuilt church, 
an authentic church. Help us, your people, all bishops, priests, deacons, and all the baptised, to help rebuild your church. May our building blocks be poverty and solidarity with the poor, humility, commitment to justice and mercy, a care for creation, and due regard for the dignity of each and every person. May our mortar be prayer and the sacrament of the Eucharist. Feed us and shape us so we may rebuild the world, rebuild the church, not for our own sake, but for the sake of all, that your kingdom may come on earth as in heaven. Pray your blessing on this, our community, on all who live and work and study in this place. We ask for a sense of resilience in these troubled times, for peace of mind, compassion of he compassionate hearts, for gentle tongues, and the willingness to do your will. Pray for the dying, and the grieving and the mourning. Pray for those suffering from poor mental health. We hold before you, especially at this time, our young adults, those whose studies are disrupted, for those whom university is not what they expected. For recent graduates so struggling so hard to find employment, we hold our young, our children and our young adults before you now. And we hold ourselves and each other before you now. Help us to lay down that which we need to lay down and pick up that which we need to pick up as we help rebuild your church. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, we pray. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the, your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, after supper he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us. The blood of Christ, shed for us. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Lord God, you made your church rich through the poverty of blessed Francis. Help us, like him, not to trust in earthly things, but to seek your heavenly gifts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those that you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.